Hi, everybody. Thanks for joining me in the locker room on this Wednesday, de December 20th. I'm Alan Locker. Jake and Lorette McCook are here today for an important mental health conversation. Jake and Lorette will discuss their new book, The Cliffs of Schizophrenia, that was released last week. Jake was hospitalized at 30 with anxiety, depression, and paranoia. He was later diagnosed with schizophrenia, and schizophrenia affects 24 million people worldwide. Their new book will invite you in, and Jake designed it with short alternating chapters between a mother and a son written in larger font for simplicity and clarity. While creating it, Jake's worst paranoid thoughts were triggered. He overcame this by writing some chapters in free form style, allowing us to experience what goes on inside his head with remarkable insight and remarkable humor. Lorette enhances those sort of thoughts by shining a light on logic wrapped in a mother's wisdom as if it might keep her son from dropping into an abyss. Together, they paint a picture of today's mental health challenges. If you are bound by this brain disease or are a loving care caregiver, you don't want to miss today's conversation. And more importantly, you must keep a copy of this book beside your bed for days when you long for normalcy. Please remember you are not alone. And please help me welcome to the locker room, Jake and Lorette McCook. Hello there. Hi, Alan. Hi. Thank you both so much for being here, for opening and sharing your story with all of us. Your book is truly going to help others going through a similar journey. And like I said backstage, I finished the book and, and truly um, thank you for putting it out into the world. Oh, we're so excited that it's out there and it's kind of hard to believe, actually. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I, you I'm work, sure I, you work yeah. on something for so long and then to actually have it in a form that you can hold is pretty remarkable. Yeah. Well, speaking of that, Jake, what was it like getting that box? I, I love the video <laughs> you posted on the website, opening the box for the first time and, and holding up, you know, your book <laughs> it was emotional it was just like you know seeing it for the first time was just like it's a trip man i i i after after doing spelling spelling the whole uh spell checks spell and checks <laughs> and and getting all the um getting it every every chapter in order after having the whole thing laid out in front of us and was just just a, an emotional experience. Yeah, long process for us. And to, to open the box, it was like uh, we both stood there and Jake what you, Jake took it and smelled the book because you know, <laughs> that smell, it's like, oh my God, we have a book, this is ours. Yeah. And I think the first thing I said to him was, um, what did I say? You're an author. I said to him yeah. and he goes, we're an we're author. An author. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> And, I, and I'm sure that, that, you know, I can't even imagine the emotion. Author, you know, uh, sort of the raw emotion too. I mean, knowing that you're putting your personal journey, your personal story, your personal me mental health challenges out for everybody. But I know that for both of you, you're doing this really in order to, to, to shine a light. Definitely. Shining a light is the most important thing is, is schizophrenia has kind of been in the shadows for a long time and, and it pops up in the news, but the only way the news seems to show it is when there's a mass shooting, there's a, a grisly murder, something awful. And of course the person has mental illness and that's the picture people see. And that's the one that keeps coming. So um, we realize that people need to see the positives of it. And someone with schizophrenia uh, has a brain disease. It's not, it's not the devil. It's not, you know, something horrible and evil. It's, it's an illness like cancer, like diabetes, anything yeah. else. 
Well, I, I read you Pam's message backstage about uh, her son struggling for 15 years. Vicky just shared that her son suffers from this life altering disease. And as a mom dealing with this, she so understands and says that the title of your book is completely accurate. Oh, nice. Yeah, it is. And Jake, by the way, I don't think anybody knows this. Jake drew the sketch, the initial sketch of standing on the edge of a cliff. And that was, remember that that whole thing when Jake used to do his That was like films. two years ago or something. Yeah. And he sketched out this feeling of being on the edge of a precipice, a cliff, and, you know, always being in danger. And I always taught him to step into the fear and i said because there's so much fear in schizophrenia so much um um in question and so many paranoias and things going on that this tremendous amount of fear that somebody with this disease carries every day 24 7. um we thought that cover really did it well and uh it's it's something we're very proud of. I mean, the, the publishers, we gave it to them and said, keep it simple. And they did. They kept the idea fresh and, and clean. So I, I love all of that. But I like how you, you spoke about um, Jake's schizophrenia because and, and the paranoia that comes with it, because Jake, you, you do express it in the book. You 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 make me feel as the reader more so than I understood before from reading sort of the that definition of what, what schizophrenia is. Oh, like hearing, yeah. hearing it from your own words. Um, Lorette, take us back. Where where did, because I believe the idea for the book came from you yourself. So what where did that pop into the, your... The, I, I think the idea for the book happened when I saw him struggling with his loss of his life of his, he, he, since he was a little boy, I mean, we all watched him evolve and, and spend all of his time doing videos and film. And he was on sets by the time he was 16, he was over at AFI taking classes. They allowed him, we had to sign a thing so that he was able to take uh, adult film classes and um, went to the LA film school and got in of his editing was it traffic oh yeah traffic one of his that video is on his website and um i just felt like this huge loss and i and and i saw that he was struggling with but does this mean i can't do it anymore because there's a flatness to schizophrenia it takes away your motivation and your and your drive and he kept fighting for it and he's still fighting for it um I lost my my train of thought. <laughs> the idea for the book. Yeah, yeah. It, I mean, for Jake to be able to write, and I knew he was a good writer. I You've always been really great at writing. So um, I suggested it to him. And you kind of, you know, at the time, talking about writing a book, it was a huge thing. And the idea is, can he sustain that? Can he, can he, do it with all his fears and everything like that. Yeah. I felt like it was like, it was like a mountain that we could climb up and we could actually get to the top of. And, um, and we did, I mean, we, we just, it was like writing a, um, um, a, um, <laughs> like, like writing a, a, a diary. Yeah. 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 And, you know, and just getting and then, giving giving one section to you and then you responding to it and then doing it a yeah it was it was an interesting process because yeah. um we would do that on any given day we'd go into an office that we rented and we'd sit with our desks across from each other and jake would write a small chapter and then give it to me i would read it then i would respond to it but by the end, I mean, this took us a process of about, what, two years? Two years. Two yeah. years altogether. And we would have all these chapters on the floor, spread out on the floor and trying to organize. Well, we need to have a timeline. We've got to know when did this happen? We can't put a childhood memory in a this. Yeah. And then Jake was the one said, let's 
let's just keep it short. He said, because for him, one of the things with schizophrenia is focus. Yeah. Um, yeah. Being able to focus. hold your focus. Yeah. Sustain it. Short term memory mm -hmm. things. Mm -hmm. um, so say today is a huge thing for him. It'll be exhausting. It's like running a marathon for anybody else because it's bringing all your thoughts together and trying to keep the outside, the peripheral thoughts right. um, at bay. So, yeah, the process for the book and the writing of the book came about from me, but then he picked it up and ran with it. Right. Was it always Jake first, or did you alternate two and, and take some chapters first, and then Jake would respond to um, you? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, sometimes. Yeah, sometimes. That's what I thought, yeah. Yeah, because, hmm. because he, <laughs> I think there was one chapter I wrote, I think the one about distraction, um, helping him. And he, he read it. And I remember he looked up at me and he goes, really? And because I had said that I had, in a sense, tricked him when we were going to the hospital and he was freaking out and he felt very, what, you were feeling very paranoid then because yeah. he hadn't gone into the hospital yet. And I thought, oh, my God, I'm I'm not going to. The one where you, where you drop your keys. Yeah. And, yeah. 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 I dropped my yeah. keys on the ground. Uh, to, to get his attention. It's like if you find something that will focus, bring his brain into focus so all these other thoughts can't be there. I said, oh, my God, Jake, I lost my keys. I dropped them like they're under the car. And he goes, Mom. And he started looking. And we kept up the conversation all the way into the hospital. And when I wrote that, he felt a little sense of betrayal. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like you were tricking me. Yeah, and I was. And it was, um, we've learned our own language over the years. And right. I think but it, it, it was, you know, right. I, I understand Jake looking at it as tricking, but it was also to help. And I mean, it's a great part of the book, a great story in the book. Um, yeah, I, I, was, I was there. I, I was there because I needed to be there. Yeah. yeah, that was a yeah, that was a scary time, you know, during yeah, the sure, you know, I I know moms very, you know, having had one myself that <laughs> yeah, I'm sure she, I'm sure she would have rather you been anywhere else. Um we'll come back to the book because there's lots to talk about, but Lorette, um, when did you first start seeing challenges in Jake for those watching to help them understand? It's that's the biggest question. People always want to know, well, when did you know? Is there a moment? And there, there is no one moment. There's uh, hindsight, you know, is always 2020. You can look back and I go, oh, wow. Um, you know, when he was little, his childhood was so normal. And his, his teens uh, were filled with videos. And he, he socially... He wasn't a party guy, but he was well liked in school. The kids all loved him, but Jake was the movie guy. And mm -hmm. right, you did, right. you know, that short films. That was his entertaining. He made films, and even some of the his football buddies would come over. If they wanted to see Jake, they had to be in a movie. So you'd get these kids coming over, and they were gangsters, and they'd get shot, and there was ketchup for blood, and there was there were all these periods of time. Um that he, um, you know, he went through. There was the the awful teen time with a lot of vomiting and and all the all the the things, the gross stomach. thing. They were the most disgusting movies. Stomach, 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 stomach ache. Ache three. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they were. They were but those, you know, those days. Um, no, in answer to the moms, I, I think you have. It, the mom's gut, there's something that doesn't feel quite right, but you don't know what it is. And I, I knew he was a gentle soul and sweet and kind and um, loud noises. I remember he hated loud, you know, something loud. He always needed to know where, like if we were going somewhere, he wanted to know where his, both his sisters, Becky and Molly, where are they? Uh, where's grandma? Where's it's And he needed order and picking him up from school, those kind of things. But at the time, as moms, we're not looking for bad things. We're we're looking for things to be okay. And so there's a place, no matter how watchful you are, things that slip by you, 
until he was about he was well and now he's into his 20s mm -hmm. when um he came home and i begin the book with this um that the, the dinosaur that, question dinosaur question um should i yeah i mean that was he comes home and he says are dinosaurs real and i i it was a little bit of a double take and i thought but again mom brain goes oh he must have meant he's asking me something about films and i just said well you know uh or, play, I said, or playing you you yeah, know or yeah, you know, yeah. yeah that was more like it i've been played plenty you know like, <laughs> all the films yeah. and everything but yeah that one was a deadly serious question and the minute he sensed my pulling back a little he just went oh no 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 i know i know it it's okay i and he walked away and it's one of those where you're left reeling a little and that was probably the first really knock on my door that something was not quite right but i didn't know what it was and you can't there's nowhere to go when you've got these feelings about mental illness that's not because we haven't been i haven't in my lifetime been educated to look out for those those signs that wasn't talked about in school or anywhere um uh, mental illness was always the crazy people and it was uh something negative or right. um so yeah i mean mommy's just you do your best and you because it might not be so you don't want to you don't want to rock the boat and i just filled him with as much um self to build his self-worth which he was he was great his video and his film world was everything to him and he he was really good at it and we had people backing it up he had won awards for it going along so he was moving in that direction until he hit a wall so yeah that that answer is a really tough one because they're it's just well, a gut. You, you said it. I mean, listening, listening, you know, and, and mm -hmm. you, you take it one day at a time from that moment. What the time frame from that dinosaur question to the diagnosis of schizophrenia, how many years is that? Because I know you talk in the book about how many other diagnoses came before yeah. you fully understood it was schizophrenia. Yeah, it was, oh gosh, different doctors and people, you know, uh, the one, um, Mark D'Antonio at UCLA, who we just revered, he passed away recently and he knew Jake from like late teens through his hospitalization. And he Maybe said like 15 years. I would say. Yeah. Yeah. Like well, yeah. But from, from, from where when, the, when, the dinosaur thing yeah. was like. 25 28 he was 30 when he was hospitalized so that was he was not diagnosed then in the hospital they said he had um oh god what was psychosis. it major depression with psychosis right and it seemed kind of fancy and roundabout and i went okay what is that what does that mean and that's the first thing as parents you're going what are you telling me? What is, what's ahead for him? Does he have to take medication? And so it was honestly a couple more years after that hospitalization where he was taking maybe um, Lexapro things for anti, um, anti depression. Um, yeah, for depression and um, those and a few other things, but he didn't get into the hardcore medications to clozapines, things like that until much later and he was diagnosed at at uh, betty ford when mm -hmm. he was there for alcohol which is by the way alcohol um and pills are like way up there on the top of mental illness specifically schizophrenia because they've got things in their head going all the time you described it once to me as like um a hundred ping pong balls all coming at him at once. And each one of the ping pong balls was a thought. Do you remember that? Yes. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and each ball represented 
say three thoughts and you had to pick the right one. So it's this constant onslaught. Of yeah, it's, it's just a matter of of um, just deciding which one you want to choose and, and, and choosing the right one. But Jake, yeah, it, sorry, go ahead. I was going to say, it's making me think of the way you talk about the ping pong, like being in the middle of the Frogger game. Is that it? Where you're dodging the cars and... Yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah, totally, totally. Yeah, like when I was at um, um, Betty Ford, I I was sober and that was the only way that I was going to actually like agree with a with a uh, with a um with a diagnosis and because i was sober and um and that and that's what you know that's what the doctor said he said you, you need to have you know this sober you know diagnosis before you continue on so that was a huge you know realization you know that i needed to stay sober and i'm sober now so um not only that is he quit smoking Six, oh. weeks, six weeks ago on his yeah. own it was his idea he just good got, for you, you know, so yeah. that's that's been like a nail biter for him so yeah. Um, yeah, I, I i come from a mother who smoked like two or three packs a day so i understand uh, <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah, totally. yeah. i understand great. um for those watching how do you define schizophrenia i knew you're gonna come to that yeah. and i you mentioned that you were going to ask me that. And so I have in front of me because okay, I am not a doctor, but I am a mom and I read a lot. I carry a notebook around with me. I take notes when people tell me things, I look things up. Um, See, that's a great lesson right there, Lorette. You know, having that notebook. Uh, oh, it's, I was it's, I've got a gazillion notebooks. I mean, I'm just sort of, my brain is on paper. And, um, but, but I think the important thing, especially in today's world with, I was just having this conversation with somebody, um, we have to be our best advocate. So you being Jake's advocate, because doctors have so much going on, like it's just, you need to, you know, having that notebook and taking those notes and making sure you get the answers you need, I think is, that's like one of the best pieces of advice I think people take in. It's, it's, uh, the scary thing for me was the first time I realized that and I shouldn't even say this, but it, that we were alone. Um, we too were, you know, and John, our family was an island because these doctors, sometimes they go, Oh my God, I know more than they do. I think because yeah. they would try and tell me something about Jake. And I finally, with one of them said, you're disagreeing with me and yet you see him 30 minutes once a month and I'm with him 24 seven. Who's going to have more information. And that doctor didn't want to have my input. So we moved on to somebody else. That's another thing for parents is if your gut tells you this doctor is wrong, run. Um, huge, huge lesson for me because yeah, yeah some of them, or if Jake, Jake, would respond negatively would say i i don't trust them done you know yeah, you, tell there's him, so tell many him, tell him about vicky and how good she's been about with everything yeah the current the doctor he's yeah, within the site the the psychiatrist right, right, here, right here and everything yeah that we can her. do emailing and, and it's definitely uh something with schizophrenia that you have to have a contact you have to have and you keep looking you just keep moving we're ever on the move even a couple months ago, we switched from our doctor of 13 years and tried somebody. She encouraged us that we need new eyes on it. And okay. it's, it's... Is this Jacqueline who encouraged that? Jacqueline, Jacqueline is a, his cognitive behavioral therapist. And she's... Oh, she's, amazing. she's been there the whole time. We stick yeah. with her. She's a, she's a good friend. Yeah. Uh, she, that's awesome. Because you, you speak highly of her in the book. Yeah, she's Jacqueline Williams. She's uh, remarkable. She had to move out of town last year and freaked us out. You know, she was yeah. moving, but she has kept up her practice online. And because of the pandemic, you got used to doing online therapy, which but you're I just want to answer. Yeah. your question. Yeah, thank you. Because I, I know I. Oh, no, I'm a major wanderer. So schizophrenia is basically it's a brain disease. It affects how a person thinks feels and behaves 
um, and what is real and what is not. That's kind of the, the basics of questioning. Jake is so amazing. I mean, today is a good day, right? Yeah, it's a good day. Yeah, it's a really good day. I mean, there are days he gets up and it's what? What's it like? Like a shit show. A shit show. <laughs> okay, that is the right you can it, and it's the truth. So yeah. I want you to say the truth. You know, yeah. people, I, I mean, I think that's sort of that part of that mental health conversation about all mental health illnesses. Tell the truth because that's how we're going to learn and help other people through yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. It's, certain days. It's, are, yeah, yeah. Certain days are are dark. He always tells me it's like a, a big cloud came in over. I mean, the only other thing is uh, delusions, yeah, on. which is paranoia. Which one? The, oh, no. Go this ahead. One? Go ahead. No. Yeah. Go ahead. Uh, delusions, which is the paranoia, which is your big, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know, the paranoia thing is tough for Jake. Um, paranoia. Yeah, because he'll come to me most nights and say, am I safe before? Yeah. yeah, I, I, nights are the worst for me. Like at night, you know, if I'm talking to a friend on the phone and it's, it's starting to get like at night, I'll just say, look, man, I gotta, I gotta get off the phone with you. It's, it's kind of, it's a bad night. It's bad, bad for me at night. So I'll get off the phone. But, um, at night when I'm, when I'm, when it's coming to nighttime, I'll, I'll sometimes sometimes go to my mom and I'll just say, "Look, I, I feel like, like, I'm gonna get assassinated in the middle of this, in the middle of the, of the night. I'm gonna get, you know, killed in the middle of my sleep. Am I safe?" And then my mom looks at me as 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 kindly and as like as genuinely as she can, right in my eyes, and she says, "No, you're totally safe." And um, that's all I need is just my mom looking right at me and saying, "You're you're safe." So it's, yes. it's, it's hard for me. I, I, you know, you, you express it quite well, Jake, in the book. So, yeah. um, and you, it's as if you, I know, uh, it's as if you knew my next question because it was exactly the <laughs> answer you just gave, which oh. was you talk in the book about mom, um, you know, uh, mom has a great deal of experience of talking you off the ledge and you just, Right. Literally said that. Um, how talk about mom and dad and, and, and your sisters, how, how they have helped over these last couple of years and, and having them, you know, to support you. Yeah. I mean, I, I always question that. I'll go, well, man, I don't know if like, you know, my sisters are going to be able to or want to support somebody who has this many issues but they've always been there for me they've always picked up the phone whenever i have an issue it's like it's like you know i, I don't even know it's like they're they're they know that that i have an issue and they're there to pick up the phone and um like my sister just putting putting in a video on uh, molly or molly molly putting a video on was it instagram or it's tiktok like tiktok, TikTok, TikTok right. yeah molly putting in a video on tiktok was just so like just so nice and so kind and i and i was just overwhelmed by that and and anybody can look at it on my website and um it's just been been so overwhelming just the the, the love that's been that, the outpouring of love from my sisters and my my parents so yeah very true you know, Pam said, pl please keep in mind that everyone doesn't have the benefit of having insurance and can't always afford the treatment. And that is yeah. very true. Um, I I think for Pam, um, I, I have somebody like our Jackie, who is the cognitive therapist. She's the only one over the years that bent over backwards to make sure she would take Medicare, Medicaid, um, we hardly ever have to pay her other doctors. Oh my God. I know it's, it's terrifying. And that's just wrong. I mean, it's wrong that to get medical care like that, that you, I mean, the money that these doctors, some of them ask and, and it's the insurance companies 
the insurance companies that won't cover uh you know most of them an appointment and some of these appointments are three four hundred dollars for half an hour and and it's um i really sympathize with that and you're absolutely right that um everybody doesn't have and most people don't have that kind of money i mean there's what did i say there was there's tw 24 is that right 24 million people in the world who have schizophrenia wouldn't you think that this would be addressed by now. It's just, I think back in the fifties um, and the forties and when they're the, even back then there were way back, there were lunatic asylums. There were places I went through a spell um, reading books about the old asylums because it's just mind boggling that they put people in these places. I mean, it calls to mind, um, Auschwitz and all these other places, but um, mental illness is, there's, there's a way Jake went to one hospital years ago, and this was Glendale. The green, the green. Oh, I should say that. But anyway, the green, hospital. <laughs> the green hospital, yeah. We went there and he was in the, uh, this beautiful, pristine ER he was taken into. And we had to wait 16 hours because the insurance wouldn't go through so he's he's like on a gurney for 16 hours and he's a mess he's really a mess this was a bad it's in the book but um he had a fractured heel and had one of his uh arteries and his wrist was cut so we had a lot of scary things but this beautiful er they finally say okay we can take him out to the psych ward and um put him in a wheelchair take him up and john and i followed up there and we realized as we got closer to this room on another floor it was almost like all the color went out of mm -hmm. out of the room i mean it yeah. was it was you go in the doors there and from this beautiful clean wonderful er and hospital you go into the psychiatric area and there were old tables like you'd it was see like in, the movie sucker punch I, sucker that's, punch that's, that's, the, it's such a random reference but they, it no, was like that it was like that. they had that kind of thing yeah. it was old metal tables nothing on the walls it was like an old school cafeteria back in the 50s or something and there was no color in there nothing and for parents john and i were absolutely sick to our stomachs of leaving him there and what what would we do we didn't get to go back and take him back there we were just told come back tomorrow so um yeah those those situations you know are dire and um i'm really aware that we are very blessed that you know jake's got a dad who's got a good job and and can get us good insurance but i ever been aware if we were unable to get him in sometimes because this doctor that doctor didn't take insurance at all um then absolutely i mean it's it's a you, you mentioned in the book you, you definitely struggled that um i think you said the show had helped pay for something they they helped they loaned us the money for well that was rehab the first time he was so that was like, you're about 28. That was prom the promises. And, and they helped out with that? Bold and beautiful, yeah. They, oh, I didn't they know helped, that. Yeah, and it, it was I it thought. was a time where it was just too last minute. It was like, we needed it like now to get him in there. And it, it, but that's a blessing, you know? Yeah. And yes. we need more employers, whoever they are, for Vicki and Pam and their families to yes. step up and help people. Um, you know, this isn't anyone's fault. Mental it's illness like, isn't a fault. It's not a fault. And I can't, I think about um, right now, there's a lot of GoFundMe pages happening. And I think, how would people respond to a family like Vicki or Pam that went and did a GoFundMe for their child, for their family? Um, is, are we ready for that? Are, you know, because I know there are people that are kind of hands off that they don't want to. Uh, and some of the things that are well, some people don't like asking, but I do think there are opportunities. Um, 
to, you know, I do think GoFundMe is a, you know, if you have a network that you can share that with. Right, right. It, that's the, you know, you, you have to have a network that you can share it with. Um, but it is yeah. sort of that kindness of strangers. It is. And it's that brainstorming when you're afraid, when you're scared for your child or your family member that has this, your brain goes everywhere trying to think, you know, what can we do? How do we do this? Um, how are we going to keep him safe? And, and, and remember Jake talked about, uh, you know, we talk about him quitting smoking and not mm -hmm. drinking right now. Mm -hmm. Um, the big thing about that is that he still has fears that what did we call them? Um, fears. The, those kind of paranoias, selective paranoia. Oh, yeah, yeah. Jake would have the fear while he was drinking, while he was smoking, eating too much. The medication makes him, you know, hungry all the time, physically hungry, like that gnawing hunger. And I would watch him. And I thought, what's this going to do to his body? The medication is is really powerful. And he's mm -hmm. taking so much of it. Drinking and, and, and eating. And the drinking, the eating, the smoking. smoking. And then he'd come to me and say, I'm afraid, I'm worried I'm going to die. But he's not worried he's going to die from that. Right. It, it, it's like, so I said, but that's like selective paranoia. Then you, you're choosing to be afraid <laughs> that somebody's going to come and attack you from behind or that you're going to be listened to, but you're not worried that you're going to die from the cigarettes and the right, right. Right. He said it earlier that he was worried about being assassinated, not the food or the, the medication. Right, right. Right. And it's, it's, it's funny when you said you stopped smoking, Vicki actually commented, she said, love that because 90% of schizophrenics smoke. So that's yes. a huge accomplishment. Totally. Right. And for them to know, um, this was news to us that, when Jake quit smoking, his doctor said, oh, we have to watch that because when you smoke, it brings the levels of your medication, the antipsychotics, it brings them down so that you have to take more medication if you're smoking in order for it to work. So for him to quit smoking, all of a sudden his medication rises up and he started having the old side effects like when he started I'm tired he's I'm tired. super super tired that's about it though that's the only yeah but it's also made him so he can do this today his medication's working better so he's yeah. more alert a little bit more alert yeah, yeah you're a lot more you don't realize you're, it you're, you're doing a great job well, really. thanks thank you <laughs> really are Lorette. in the book you talk about the truth is in the simplicity you know, I mean, you're giving great advice. You know, if somebody was watching and, and they got this diagnosis tomorrow, what would be the first piece of advice you would tell them? Um, hold out hope. I mean, my, my thing is always hope. I was told in support groups, I was almost laughed at in the beginning because they went around the room saying it. What, where are you at this point? Are you, um, are you still struggling with this? Do you have acceptance yet? And I, I said, no, I, I accept it. And I said, except for the part where, you know, I, I believe that he can be happy. We can find that for him. And they'd all go, mm. you know, and I'd say, no, I really believe I mean, aside from the money issue that family love, and it can be, it can be a friend, a mentor, uh, mm -hmm. that having people for Jake, he's got an, an aunt, Marilyn, that is, has been absolutely, you know, he texts her and talks to her. She gets his paranoia. She understands it. He's, you know, um, he's got aunts and uncles and his grandparents are gone. He was close to his grandma, but family is everything and believing and treating the person, um, Jake's sister, Molly and her husband, John, who's a godsend too. Cause he, he Jake always says, I feel like he gets me. I mean, that's the yeah. best compliment you could have from somebody with this because most people don't, you know, they kind of, think 
you know, maybe that you're a little odd or, yeah. or you know, <laughs> but they don't see what we see. People are know. afraid of the unknown. They just need to, you know, yeah. I, I, you know, like you said, you've educated yourself. It is about, I think everything in our world today is about education. It educate is. educate yourself about this but it is great to have and i agree this a support system when you're you know even for you i mean lorette you said you're you go to a support group talk about that because that, for for pam and vicky and others how uh it's it, the abbreviation is nami n-a-m-i NAMI, the national alliance for mental illness and i to be really honest I haven't been to a support group in a while. I get caught up. There's been so much going on with the book and everything. But, and since the pandemic, you have to do it online. And it's, to me, it's not as, you know, it's a little bit harder. But a support group or having a support system, um, for example, <laughs> I remember my, John and I went to this one support group and we were worried about Jake drinking a lot at that time of, of, trying to mask, he'd say, I can't, my, my brain, there was so much going on. I just had to, I had to. And, um, this mom in the group, she said, well, I figured out my husband and I, um, no, actually I think her husband had left her. So she was there. She decided that her son could drink on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to go, yeah, how's that working for you now? Because you, you know, it's not like with alcohol when you're drinking those quantities and to block out feelings that um, it's, you know, it's just going to make it go away. And you can't say on Tuesday you could drink Wednesday. You can't. There was no stopping it. When Jake was going through one of his binge things, um, I didn't always know, but I could, I knew by his hair. This sounds funny, but um, <laughs> it's. It's, it's a so, mother's intuition, but it that's is, hysterical. He came out and it was the way his hair was sticking out and his eyes were never focused, you know, and I know it was going to be a rough day. I mean, um, never, you know, you can't, those signs are so clear when they're little and when they're, that never goes away, that ability to read somebody. Something, something new to be paranoid about, you know, my style is my hair is. <laughs> it is... Do, alcoholism and smoking hand in hand with schizophrenia for most patients or I think oh, so oh man yeah I, I have a schizophrenic uh, friend who's schizophrenic and he's he's smokes and drinks so I mean I, I that, that doesn't surprise me that 90% of schizophrenics smoke I mean that's just like I mean that doesn't surprise me at all. You no, know, I, I think that that is fairly accurate. Yeah. Um, it's like AA meetings are full of people smoking, you know, drinking coffee and smoking. Oh yeah. But it's, <laughs> right. They put uh, one vice down and pick oh, yeah, another. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And and um I knew this was gonna be the battle being I I mean, Jake has had a lot of talks with specialists about the drinking because saying because one doctor at UCLA said, you know, the drinking is the key. And I think it's the key, but to get him to stop drinking, but then have his stuff in his brain increase and the, and the thoughts, the scary things and the messages he was getting that he was dying and that his body was shutting down. Um, those are still there. Those are never going to go the, go away, which is the terrible thing with schizophrenia. Jake's, Jake knows this. It's he's always going to have these, but management of the symptoms with medication mm -hmm. eventually mm -hmm. becomes. I'm sorry, I lost you because I was looking at Jackson. Oh, our dog came in, so he he. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. The, the 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 family the family yeah. pet. Yeah, um, we get forty. Oh, nice, nice, yeah. nice, nice. Jake, tell us about the glossary of resources and your artwork that also uh, is in the book. Oh, oh yeah, um, we have um, we have a glossary of of, of selective selected um, um, 
artwork and that's actually in the oh no no he's talking about the, the yeah that's the website has the the artwork oh, the are website. you talking about the website right now yeah, and there's artwork in the book too right at the that's end of the book yeah yeah i love i loved i love them at the end of the book those are great oh, yeah <laughs> yeah they're 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 you know we we tried to like put some put them put them as interestingly as, as we could yeah i don't know we 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 uh we'll we'll see how people like them. I'm glad you like them. Very I'm much so. You. Very much so. Oh, thanks. Thanks. It, yeah. it is people. Those are his people. <laughs> he's got all kinds of sketches and things. He's kind of pulled away from it recently. Um, you know, I think he'll go back to it because we have a studio in the back uh, yard that he works in. But I think when we started writing the book, that really took a lot of your your creative yeah. juices and so it was it was a little harder so putting the artwork in the book was perfect to be able to do that and on the website <laughs> on the website yeah 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 i was uh a little hesitant to put those in because i didn't think that they were good enough but but i you know we'll we'll see how how, how it goes i'm jake, glad you like them. jake always worries that it sounds like he's showing off when he talks about something of the way something is said or when his biography you know was put together yeah. when somebody put it together he said oh no that makes me sound so full of myself and and i said but it's it's things you've done it's things you should be proud of and you've accomplished and absolutely we have to toot our own horn sometimes yeah we do <laughs> yeah. we get one chance sometimes exactly yeah. you know being so honest and sharing this and and now the book's out was there hesitation on either of your parts of of being so vulnerable and and yeah. leaving it for the world to see oh yeah like at first i was like let's go let's do it let's like leave it all hanging out there and then you know uh, like um probably a couple of weeks afterwards i was I was out in like uh, out at a mall, and I was like looking around at all the people, and I was like, "Has he read my book?" <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like, oh man, I don't know about that. So you know, I, I get like that every once in a while, but then overall, I'm like, you know what? I don't care. You know, this book is helping. If this book helps helps one person, then I'm I'm happy about it about that. So and, and Jake, I think that's the right attitude i mean i i do some yeah. shows like this and i feel the same way if it helps one I, you know it, it's worth doing um yeah. you also in, invite people to to write you messages on on uh the website as well correct yeah, yeah. oh yeah on the guest book yeah yeah it's, it's 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 hard to get a website really going you know how that is sure. it's like we're so used to uh, social media and it's so instantaneous. You just sit there and boom, you're putting something up there. But if you go to the website and you really take the time, there's a lot there. I mean, we have Jake's videos are up, his art. We have the events like today, what we were doing. Um, we have lots of information about the book and uh, where you can get it, which by the way, the book uh, came launched, I think last Friday. And when it launched, within 15 minutes, it sold out, which we were really, we were both freaked out and upset about. And yet somebody said, no, that's that's a good thing. That'll make people go, wow, that's, I don't know. <laughs> I don't. So it's now it's back on Amazon. You can order it. It's not going to be in two days, but within two weeks, you'll get it. And it's at Barnes & Noble. We're getting it into the bookstores. Um, not quite yet, but it's almost there. Um sure. In Los Angeles, there's there's a couple, you know, Romans and Book Soup and all those places have it. But I think anywhere online, any bookstore, any major outlet has it online. Um, Book Baby. And there's a link directly from the website to Amazon as well. Yes, you can just click yeah. the link and go directly yeah. to it. So that would help us lots, lots if people would go to the website and subscribe to it and... Um, and yeah. make, make notes, write reviews on Amazon. That's really big. Yeah. That helps. I, oh, absolutely. I, I will do that. I will do that. You know, there are so many tips throughout the book that will be helpful to other families, such as building your team, 
using distraction as you used with the keys, um, the support groups. Was there one tip, Lorette, that you received early on that was, you know, like the life saver for you, a, a, a really helpful hint that you would advice, share? Advice, you mean? It, yeah, a piece of advice somebody gave you early on. Wow. Uh, I How about schizophrenia? Yeah, I honestly, I didn't have a whole lot of advice. I didn't know. I, I had one friend whose son had it, but it was very different. It was, there are different symptoms. There are hallucinations, which Jake doesn't get, but um, no, I, I didn't have a whole lot. I just had to struggle through the doctors. It's kind of a lonely uh, thing. I mean, just a quick example of a doctor thing. When in the beginning, we went to a cognitive therapist before our Jackie, we, before meeting her and he, um, he was talking to Jake and Jake was in a really bad way. And he asked Jake um, on the second appointment, Jake, do you ever feel like, you know, harming yourself? Do you ever feel, you know, the questions about suicide, mm -hmm. things like that. And at the time Jake said, sometimes, yeah. At the end of the session, he came into me and he said, um, just letting you know, um, I'm going to be discharging Jake. I can't, I cannot see him anymore. And I went, excuse me. And he said, because it's a liability. If your child is suicidal, you're not going And I thought, wait, but you're a doctor. I thought, this is what you do. Where do I go? Yeah. I mean, we, ha I've had several things happen along the way and you will too. You just move on. I mean, that guy, I see him in my sleep. Ooh. <laughs> the well, darts, are, the darts are going at him. <laughs> oh yeah, he had snakes and boots. So I, I can't, I'll never forget him. <laughs> but you do, you know, you do share amazing uh, tips that I think truly helpful to people. Um, Jake, I know you have an incredible, as your mom talked about, love of the movies, and you work on editing projects where you take movies and you edit trailers and music videos. Um, and in the book, you talk about Crimson Tide. I yeah. actually worked on, I worked on the movie back oh, in the wow. day cool, in public man. relations. Um, nice. Where did your love of movies begin? Oh man. I mean, ever since I was a kid, ever since I was like seven or eight years old, mm. I just loved, loved movies. And um, yeah, like, like Crimson Tide, I used to like, insert myself into movie trailers and like put myself into like, I would talk in, into like, and put like, You'd be Brad someone, Pitt. yeah, be Brad Pitt. So if Brad Pitt spoke a line, I would like speak the line and put myself in the, in that, in that line. And so, yeah, I would be, I would, I would do fun stuff like that all the time. But um, yeah, I, I just, you know, I had my own little studio that I would, I would, um, work in every day every night for for years and years day and know, night day and, and night. your sisters sis, your sisters were your talent were your actors yeah my actresses <laughs> molly was my uh was my uh my meryl streep <laughs> then my my other sister was my um was not my meryl streep but she was still pretty good she was funny <laughs> becky becky was always That's great it, it it was his it it was the thing that I think around seventh grade he was having trouble uh in school focusing, you know, and there were his grades were dropping a little. And the principal called us in and said, Maybe if you take his equipment away for a couple of weeks, let's see if his grades come up. He tanked. I mean, and the yeah. we got a call from his teacher saying, give it back to him. We were wrong. <laughs> And they start letting him do book reports on in it. He would uh, put together, he would be the reporter and then he would be the other guy and he would do the whole thing. And they were very professional. And yeah. so he'd turn them in. And that's how most of his book reports went during junior yeah. high years. High school yeah. was more of a challenge. The, the, the reporter guy, like, um, <laughs> like those old, like, like nineties, like, reporter TV shows. Like, I don't even know what they're called. I can't remember what those were called. Oh, like, but. Yeah. 
like Dateline or something or yeah yeah, yeah stuff like that yeah <laughs> i would do those that that's so funny you know a few years back you all spent christmas eve at ucla i think you know holding your hand jake what are you all looking forward to this christmas no oh, a good christmas going to going to um lake arrowhead, lake arrowhead. we're yeah. gonna do five days up there at airbnb um mm. and my sister's flying in from seattle and it's it's we all agreed stress-free we're all taking books we're going to just relax and you know have a quiet time where we can walk and talk and just eat good food get fat <laughs> i like that idea I, yeah, the yeah. Get fat is a, you know the holidays for sure in, <laughs> in the book and i'm not going to share it now jake you 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 give your schizophrenia a name um, oh yeah how how is that person doing today now that you you know you just spent an hour talking to me do you still feel pretty good today after i've given him a name no you meant after you know did you when you named him but um, it well by the way it wasn't the schizophrenia he named his paranoia and so oh, okay so we were able to treat him oh. like he was more in the room and how how is that paranoia part of you doing that oh, oh, oh that's yeah interesting it, it was that was that recommended as yes. a Jackie, i think Jackie I recommended said that to try I and give him give, give him, him a name. name yeah he she 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 uh, recommended that yeah but he's yeah he's pretty he's pretty weak now he's 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 pretty weak in my brain so so he's, you know, I'm I'm dealing with my life without him pretty pretty consistently. He pops up. Pops up every every once in a long while. I'll pop up and then I'll just rush him. We go there. He is. Go away. Yeah, oh, we, rush him away. I mean, it's it's, you know, it's that feeling that, um, as soon as that rears its head again, and it's in a, it's there every day. It's not that he goes away for a long period mm -hmm. of time. It's there constantly. But Jake's management of it tells me his medication's working better than it has been. Yeah. Um, and and yeah. you must see Lorette with the smoking and the drinking not a part of the world that it <sighs> it, it it must be, you know, a little uh, lighter in in in, in, in having the paranoia and all the other. Oh, it's 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 like yeah, drink those periods when there's drinking, when there's smoking, the drinking scared, scared me a lot because I thought the combination of all that medication in him and alcohol and the smoking, I worried about his health. And, um, it's, it's, oh my God, it's, it's so much lighter not having that, you know, mm -hmm. right now. Mm -hmm. And I'm practical. I know, you know, yeah, I usually bring him up to you and I'll say he's, he's here. Oh yeah, Bob. Bob yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's Bob, by the way. That's yeah, right. <laughs> but what are you know? What just listening to both of you and and hearing about the family? I mean, it's a team effort. It is. It's the, yeah, it's the McCook team effort. That totally. yeah, it is totally. It's it's. We we, I, we, we need T-shirts that say the McCook team, <laughs> like a baseball oh, jersey. No, it's <laughs> so true. I mean, yeah. I mean, we. I don't know. I. You know, it really is when when Molly calls right before we did this, she had a doctor appointment. And so she's in the car pep talking Jake and just saying, you know, just be you and, and relax. And and um, um, oh, one of the things that was important and for Vicky and Pam, too, is um, that there was a question you were we you asked earlier and it was about the ledge talking him off the ledge mm -hmm. one of the things we always do and this covers anxiety bipolar anything you know today god knows after watching the nightly national news you need to get rid of anxiety mm -hmm. but we do a thing that it's just a breathing oh, thing and you've god. seen this here we go okay let's do and we All put right. hands up in the air and you take a breath in through your nose, inhale, and you hold it, count to three, two, three, and then slowly exhale, pushing your arms out through your mouth, 
And if you do that like three times, it's it will center you again. And every time it works for me, usually he yawns. <laughs> and so yeah. I know it's like it's if you really focus on it and reach up as high as you can and touch no, the ceiling. The longer you re you stay up there, the better it is when you come back down here because you feel warmth in here. Um, yeah, I love that because I, I don't, I, it might have been anxiety or some reason of me having trouble sleeping. I read about sort of breathing exercises, you know, breathing in for a count of four, uh, breathing out on a count of four, and then holding your breath for a count of four. Exactly. It, clears your your mind i guess or something and helps it me clears, but physically you know w when we have anxiety all of us or can't sleep we forget that it's the breathing when i'm nervous or i have a lot going on we shallow breathe in our chests you know you're not even aware of it um rabbits when they're scared they they stop breathing so that people they're not discovered they hide fear makes us you know quiet but if you and stretch your arms out and you feel that and you're exhaling out all the negativity um it's it's great it really does work i mean always we always have the best intentions jake always say have you done it today he goes no you know <laughs> but sometimes it's, it's really necessary i love that um Oh, uh, sorry. What was I going? I wanted to read what Vicky just had written. She said, Lorette, as a fellow mom in a club we never thought we'd belong to, thank you so much for this. My son is now watching and so appreciates you, Jake. Oh, oh nice. Tell him, please, to come to the website and talk <laughs> to Jake. He can write to him. And yeah. that's great. Absolutely. A lot to us. Thank you. Well, thank you both so much for for really opening up and sharing this with the world. Oh, you're so welcome. Thank and you. thank you so much for having us. My pleasure. Stay here while I sign off. I Okay. Thanks, everybody, for being here. Thank you to Jake and Lorette McCook for opening up. Please pick up a copy of The Cliffs of Schizophrenia, where all books are sold. Go to Amazon.com, which will probably be easier. And you can go to uh, jakemccook.com and order it there. Please join us this Friday as we celebrate Soap Opera Digest with three women who made a huge impact on the magazine and helped bring it to life for the last few decades. Meredith Berlin, Lynn Leahy, and Stephanie Sloan will be my guests. If you haven't yet subscribed to my YouTube channel, you can do so down below. Turn on the notifications for reminders of all upcoming shows. And if you know anyone who is suffering, please share this show. Please reach out to them and say hello. I'll see you on Friday, everybody. Please, please stay safe.